dear student we study about superposition of waves when two or more waves traveling through a medium pass through a common point each wave produces its own displacement at that point independent of the presence of the other wave the resultant displacement at that point is equal to the vector sum of is equal to the vector sum of displacements due to the individual wave at that point example of superposition of principle superposition of wave two waves consider two waves one wave and another wave two waves are in phase two waves are in phase what is mean by in phase two waves are in phase Suppose consider one wave form having considered the crest and another wave form having considered on again crest. Therefore, crest and crest, trough and trough. Therefore, the two wave forms are in phase. The two wave forms are in phase. And when another wave form having considering crest and another wave form considered as Trough. Therefore, the two wave forms are out of phase. The phase difference in between these crest and trough is pi. Means the two wave forms are out of phase. When two wave forms arrive simultaneously in a medium, according to superposition principle, the two wave forms. arrive simultaneously in the medium they cross the same common point suppose two wave forms and another wave form they cross the same common point to each other and the resultant wave form of that two waves means the vector sum of that two are in presence of the or the presence of the other wave independent of the presence of the other wave means one wave form is absent when its displacement it gives its displacement and another wave form is present at that time first wave form is absent therefore the, the resultant displacement of that two waves is equal to the vector sum of that two waves hence y1 suppose that wave is considered as y1 and another wave considered as y1 y2 therefore the resultant wave is obtained y is equal to y1 plus y2 because of displacement is a vector quantity hence the vector sum of that two waves नाहीतर आपल्याला काय करता आलं असतं एकाची एम्प्लिट्यूड a1 दुसऱ्याची एम्प्लिट्यूड a2 डायरेक्ट आपल्याला सम करता आली असती y is equal to a1 plus a2 Resultant amplitude is a1 plus a2, but displacement is a vector quantity. Therefore, the vector sum of that two means y is equal to y1 vector plus y2 vector. Hence, the two wave forms are in phase. The vector sum of that two amplitudes. Therefore, the resultant amplitude of that two wave forms is obtained. a resultant amplitude is denoted by a similarly the two wave forms are considered having phase difference in between these two waves is phi and their amplitudes are changes their amplitudes are different means if the difference in between these two amplitudes therefore according to the superposition principle the two wave forms and uh, they superimpose to each other super according to superposition principle the vector sum of that two waves and the resultant wave obtain and the resultant amplitude of that resultant wave expression for resultant amplitude obtain an expression for resultant amplitude expression for resultant amplitude 
of two waves of two waves are according to by superposition principle by superposition of waves expression for resultant amplitude of two waves consider two waves their amplitudes are different amplitudes are different frequency same and phase difference phase difference is phi phase difference in between these two waves is phi consider two wave forms first one is y1 is equal to a1 sin of omega t first wave form and another wave form y2 is equal to a2 sin of omega t plus phi second number equation first wave is considered as y1 is equal to a1 sin of omega t and a2 is equal to a2 sin of omega t plus phi therefore the vector sum of that two according to superposition principle y is equal to y1 plus y2 therefore y is equal to a1 sin omega t plus a2 sin of omega t plus phi by expansion of that term sin of omega t plus phi means sin of a plus b by using that formula sin a plus b is equal to sin a cos b plus cos a sin b that formula can be used hence resultant amplitude resultant wave y is equal to a1 sin of omega t plus a2 sin omega t cos phi plus cos omega t sin phi by taking sin omega t term is common therefore a1 plus in in that term a2 cos phi a2 cos phi common term is sin omega t sin omega t plus multiply by that second term a2 cos omega t sin phi that equation can be obtained by using that formula sin a plus b is equal to sin a cos b plus cos a sin b expansion of that equation sin omega t cos phi plus cos omega t sin phi we get the terms y is equal to a1 plus a2 cos phi sin omega t plus a2 cos omega t sin phi hence by using that equation a1 plus a2 a1 plus a2 cos phi is equal to a cos theta by using the term a1 plus a2 cos phi is equal to a cos theta term and a2 sin phi a2 sin phi is equal to a sin theta substituting that values a1 plus a2 cos phi is equal to a cos theta and a2 sin phi is equal to a sin theta then we get the equation for resultant wave equation y is equal to a is the common term in that term p therefore a a1 plus a2 cos phi is cos theta means sin omega t cos phi 
plus a cos omega t sin phi so sin theta sin theta the equation can be obtained in terms of theta therefore resultant wave equation a is the common term therefore sin omega t cos theta plus cos omega t sin theta again by using that equation sin omega t cos theta a means omega t and b means theta sin a cos b plus cos a sin b hence by using sin a plus b y is equal to a sin of omega t plus theta that equation is the resultant wave equation by using superposition principle y is equal to a sin of omega t plus theta the resultant wave is also obtained in sin function form and omega t plus phi it represents as is the state of oscillation or state of vibration and theta is represents phase hence by using that equation where a is denoted by resultant amplitude resultant amplitude and expression find out for the resultant amplitude a how a is obtained in that equation a is obtained equation number 3 and equation number 4 by using equation number 3 and equation number 4 because of a term is included in that terms a cos theta and a sin theta therefore that equate by using that two equations we obtain the resultant amplitude now consider that two equations a1 plus a2 cos phi is equal to a cos theta is equal to a cos theta a1 plus a2 cos phi is equal to a cos theta that equation is equation number 3 and a2 sin phi is equal to a sin theta equation number 4 taking that equation squaring and adding squaring and adding these two equation squaring and adding equation 3 and 4 A one plus A two cos phi bracket square plus in the case in the case side A two sine phi bracket square is equal to A cos theta bracket square means A square cos square theta plus A square sine square theta in the case in the case side taking one side and rhs rhs side taking another side therefore a1 square plus a2 square cos square phi plus twice a1 a2 a1 a2 cos phi plus a plus b adding a plus b bracket square A plus B bracket square is equal to A square plus B twice A B plus B square. Therefore, A square plus B square plus twice A B means they added with respect to A two square 
sin square phi is equal to taking a square is common sin square theta plus cos square theta. But sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. By using an identity sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. Therefore a1 square plus a2 square cos phi plus a2 square sin square phi. A2 square is common. Sin square phi plus cos square phi plus twice A1 A2 cos phi is equal to sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. Remaining terms only A square. Therefore, sin square phi plus cos square phi is 1. Hence, A square is equal to A1 square plus a2 square plus twice a1 a2 cos phi taking square root on both side we can obtain only the value for a resultant amplitude not amplitude square but only amplitude therefore resultant amplitude a is taking square root On both side. Taking square root on both side. Therefore, taking square root, root of a square means only a term. a is equal to square root of a1 square plus a2 square plus twice a1 a2 cos phi. The resultant amplitude depends on Resultant amplitude depends on amplitude of the two waves and phi. Phi means phase difference in between these two waves. The phase difference in between these waves and resultant or the amplitudes of the two waves. Hence resultant amplitude A is equal to A1 square plus A2 square plus twice a1 a2 cos phi we can obtain the value for resultant amplitude from the equations equation number 3 and equation number 4 squaring and adding and by addition of that two equations squaring and adding therefore a square is equal to a1 square plus a2 square plus twice a1 a2 cos phi and taking square root on both sides, therefore a is equal to square root of a1 square plus a2 square plus twice a1 a2 cos phi. What is the value of the amplitude, resultant amplitude when the phase difference is 0 pi? Now calculate the value of resultant amplitude when the phase difference is Resultant amplitude Resultant amplitude for phase difference Phase difference is First condition, case first Case first phi is equal to 0. We consider that phi is equal to 0. Means phase difference in between these two waves, phi is equal to 0. Therefore, what is the value of resultant amplitude when phase difference is 0? The formula for resultant amplitude A is equal to square root of A1 square plus A2 square plus twice A1 A2 cos phi. But phi is equal to 0, means cos 0. Cos 0 is equal to 1. Substituting that value, we get the equation for a1 square plus a2 square plus twice a1 a2. Cos phi, cos 0 is 1. And substitute that value 1, 
1 into 2 a 1 a 2 means twice a 1 a 2. Therefore, by using again identity a plus b bracket square is equal to a square plus twice a b plus b square means square root of a1 plus a2 bracket square. Square root and square get cancelled. Therefore, resultant amplitude in the phase difference is phi is equal to 0. Resultant amplitude is the sum of that amplitudes of the two waves. A is equal to a1 plus a2. Resultant amplitude is a1 plus a2. But when phase difference is pi by 2. When phase difference is pi by 2. Then calculate the resultant amplitude. Case second. Case second. Phase difference pi is equal to pi by 2. Means cos pi by 2. Means cos pi is 180. 180 divided by 2 means cos 90. Cos 90 is 0. Substitute that value in that equation. Therefore, resultant amplitude A is equal to what is the formula for resultant amplitude? A1 square plus A2 square plus 